<laughs> Hello all my dear viewers. Thanks for coming back. I'm Denise with Spiritual Growth Tarot, although this is an astrology reading and I'm going to be diving into our uh, Jupiter. <laughs> my goodness, we have something that hasn't happened since 1856, so 166 years ago, and we're having it again. Jupiter conjunct Pluto in Pisces. And uh, so at first I'm going to show you just with the natural zodiac wheel, you know, like a zero degree Aries chart. And, and I won't be able to go into the house setup uh, or read anything about the houses because I won't know where, you know, that lies for you in your own natal chart. But we'll get to see the planetary configuration that is just so beautiful right now. Beautiful and challenging, of course. Uh, with the nature of, you know, what's going on. Um, so, but anyway, we will, uh, I will show you that and you guys can comment away. Let me know what you think, how you feel about it. And then the next, uh, the, the next one, I'll, I'll look at the transits in the USA natal chart. Or USA, I can't really say birth chart because it was way before that, probably 1600s, but the uh, July 4th, 1776 chart, the U.S. Sibley chart, the Independence, Articles of Independence, Declaration of Independence, I should say. <laughs> I was thinking Articles of Incorporation. I guess that could go, but anyway, it was our stake in the ground, you know, from British rule, away from British rule. And taxation without representation, all of those <sighs> crazy things we had to fight for. So, but anyway, um, let me show you these charts and uh, I'll just drop the camera down and get started. There's nothing better than just looking at the charts. <laughs> okay, hold on one second. Okay, so I have highlighted the major things I want to focus on right now. I'm leaving out the moon because it moves so quickly. I But I just have to, you know, give credence to the fact that Oh my goodness, the last conjunction of Jupiter-Neptune, like I said, it's 166 years ago. Turns out it was uh, March 17th, 1856 to be exact. But, you know, of course, Neptune moves so slowly through the signs. I, I bet that it was felt as early as, uh, I don't know, maybe like 1845, something like that. Uh, when at first, it might have been 1846 or 7, I can't remember, we could look it up, but uh, when Neptune first entered Pisces, you know, like left Aquarius and then moved into Pisces, back then, uh, that whole transit did last in all the way through to like eight, the 1860s, like early 1860s, and of course, Back in those times, you know, we can remember in history, we had, um, we had like, you know, quite a few little revolutions going on in Europe, and Marxism came in, and then in the U.S., we had our Civil War, right? Um, which I don't think, I remember when I looked back, I'm pretty sure that um, Neptune had made it through Aries by the time, uh, you know, our Civil War ended in 1865. I'd have to recheck that, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so, but this current transit of Neptune, it started back in 2011, and it's going to last through until uh, January, I don't remember the date, but I do remember 2026. Now, we have to remember that Jupiter was the traditional, so here's Jupiter here, that used to be the traditional ruler of Pisces before Neptune was discovered. Uh, so Neptune's now the modern ruler, but so we have this double whammy here. <laughs> and um, and I'll talk about these, you know, this aspect of the architect here, the square to the nodes is really important. Like I said, leaving out all these other aspects down here to the moon. So just kind of focus in here, right? And then the nodes. I And, and I'm going to only touch a little bit on the sun and Mercury because they move so quickly, but they're in aspect to Pluto, which is powerful, you know, for, for this day when April 12th comes up. But I believe we'll be feeling it before because the slower moving planets 
especially when they're, you know, applying to the personal planets, we feel them pretty strongly. So, but anyway, just to get back to Jupiter, Jupiter rules our belief systems. It, Jupiter expands things. And um, if our belief systems are aligned with truth, then, you know, we're headed in the right direction. And that's always our task. Jupiter brings in healing energy and can help us uh, align with, with the truth. What is our deeper inner truth, you know, personally? What are our real feelings? Are we working our way to... Um, to move quickly or to move to move deeply and thoroughly you know into our real self or are we just trying to like skate quickly um over things and just you know it's kind of like blowing up life with with um um you know like <laughs> more toys more things you know expanding in um like surface type of ways, not uh, not things that are deeply spiritually fulfilling, and that's you know one of the major opportunities here with with um, Scorpio on the South Node. We're talking deep spirituality, the deep inward focus, uh, or it can be other things, right? So Jupiter ruling the belief systems or ruling our our belief systems. They can, like I said, they can be aligned with the truth or the exact opposite and filled with lies and half-truths, which, you know, half-truth is still a lie. And that's how, that's how you know, monsters, uh, dictators, autocrats, that's how they uh, manipulate the masses. You know, with the, they'll find one little piece of a, of a, you know, truth or they'll find something that's true and then they'll flip it around in a bunch of different ways to get, you know, to serve their purpose for um, controlling, making up, you know, lies just to control. It's also, Neptune and Pisces can also bring in that element of gaslighting. That's the major downside of Neptune is victimization, gaslighting, um, you know, and the, and the lies. So delusions, right, with Neptune, foggy, confusing delusions. So it's up to us to decide what we want to align with and to always look within to find our inner truth. But here's a clue to tune into whether or not you're aligned with the truth, you know, like the absolute truth, which lives inside of, you know, the nucleus in every cell in our bodies because that's our spirits. Uh, but you will feel, if you're aligned with the truth, you'll feel your spontaneous real love, your real self coming up from within. When you're with others, when you're facing issues in life, uh, and if you're not feeling that, then you realize, oh, well, I'm not really in truth here. And then you can just open up and ask for the truth inside of you. But if you're diluted in the lower vibration of Neptune, you know, these people, are they're going to want to be numbing out. We could be tempted to want to numb out more often, right? Like it's just too hard, you know, and you want to just escape. Well, I'm not saying to, um, you know, to, to not take care of yourself at all. I'm definitely saying to, you know, self-care is just so important. But if you find yourself wanting to, um, you know, use drugs or alcohol, you know, to the point where you're just like obliterating yourself, then you know that you're in defense about feeling something that is, you know, it's challenging you and um, can just lead to being depressed. It can lead to uh, more confusion. And then the more we're involved in that like negative pleasure of pushing away life and escaping or even going into revenge, right? With the South Node and Scorpio here, we have to be careful about that. Um, you know, or hatred or gossip and maligning and like warring mentality. Well, if that's where we're going, then we know we're coming from the wrong end of the spectrum with uh, Neptune there, and especially Jupiter, because Jupiter can blow it all up, right? The way to, to work with it is to go towards bliss and positive reality and happiness and abundance, and want that for everyone else on the planet too. But regardless of which end you're coming from, 
you know, which other, whichever side of the spectrum. From either end, we're going to be more sensitive. And that's because of, you know, <laughs> the spiritual source energy of Neptune is very subtle, but it, it's, been, it's been building, 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 right, since 2011. And it's now in this later degree. And now with Jupiter, things are going to blow up. We're going to expand into uh, being much, much more sensitive. So you might notice that things that you used to be able to eat or drink or get away with, you can't anymore. Your body is much more sensitive. Um, but, you know, even if you're coming from the wrong end, you're still doing better than those who are just apathetic and don't care right? Maybe even thinking that the spiritual path means just not being fully human right here, right now. But like, you know, just think back to the days of Hitler. It's like he wouldn't have been able to do what he did over, you know, without that apathetic consent of, um, you know, the quiet majority. If everybody would have rebelled at him, uh, you know, like, I mean, we did, we did with Trump. He didn't get voted back in. And, and that was really hard with all the voter suppression and, and some, of the, <laughs> some of the things that happened with voting machines, you know? Uh, what's the name of that? Oh, Kill Chain. There's a, there's a documentary that HBO put out, and you can find it just about on any platform and rent it. I really, really recommend it. It's really interesting. I... Um, you know, but so that that's out there. Watch that, and and you'll you'll see, like what we were really up against with that last election in 2020. So, but you know, this is applying to all parts of the world. I have this, like I said, set up as a zero degree um, chart because I can't put a place on it. I I just you know I have to run it for somewhere, and then you put it at zero degrees. But you can overlay this over the world. It would happen at different, um, you know, different um, exact times, depending where we're at in the world. But, like, of course, this would be 9.34 um, a.m. if this were Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, but anyway, okay, so back to the chart. So... Hitler wouldn't be able to do what he did, right? We, he terrorized people. He kept them in fear. But, you know, the buck has to stop somewhere, sometime in our lives. And who knows how many souls have reincarnated. I think I'm one of them. I, I know I died in a gas chamber in my last lifetime. I had so many dreams to help me come into, you know, terms with that. So anyway, I'm just thinking like how many other souls have reincarnated just to overcome that last diluted, you know, state of existence that we had to go through, right? Like for me, I got in touch with uh, the false belief that I didn't matter uh, as I was, you know, dying in that last lifetime. And, and I woke up going, whoa, okay, so now I know what my ticket in here was for this lifetime. And I... Uh, yeah, so you'll get the information when you're ready for it. You just have to ask, that's all. <laughs> Your spirit will bring it to you. But so anyway, so back to Jupiter and Neptune here. They are in their best, you know, in, in the heightened uh, sense, the best um, vibration, I guess I could say. Uh, they're compassionate. They're tolerant. And they will fight for the underdog because they know the truth. You know, with uh, Jupiter here, we're talking, you know, justice and truth. In the worst, they can be influenced, seduced, you know, into numbing out or, and or, you know, like living in fear at the same time, right? Because we have to remember the polar opposite of Pisces is Virgo. And Virgo can be fear fearful if it's not, you know, aligned with love and truth and, and, and strengthened. But I, Virgo is one of my favorite signs. I have so many Virgo friends and I just love them dearly. I'm, they're strong. When they, when they get into their strength, they are strong. But it's because they've embraced that, you know, that... Uh, opposite polarity of Pisces and they're really in tune with their spirits and so they're kind of okay with just being in life the way it is um, but so uh, Jupiter is one of the builders of the zodiac 
along with uh, Saturn. So Jupiter, just remember, hold on, excuse me. <coughs> Jupiter will open up and expand. And then uh, Saturn will come in and build as, as long as there's some truth. Hold on, I need to grab some water. Yeah, okay, that's better. <laughs> so Jupiter expands. Saturn uh, can, can contract, but it brings things into form. So whatever we've built in truth will will stand withstand the text uh, the the test of time. Uh, you know when uh, when Saturn comes in, and the, the, we will have this conjunction at some point. Um, I'll have to look look for it. I, I'm going to guess based on and this this would be a little um, see how we have this little right here this. This little ses, ses, not sesqu square. This is a sesqu square, semi square right here. There's there's an adjustment going on between these two, but it's kind of it's just it's a friction and there's um, there's a friction and there's irritation. And I go over these things in my weekly um, astrological transit, so I I won't stick with it a whole lot here. But the Saturn at some point will can will move into Neptune. Uh, conjunction here and at that point I think we're going to have just so well you know it Jupiter is opening things up so everything I'm telling you about this transit when by the time Saturn moves into conjunction with Neptune and I'm going to guess it's about two years from now I, I'm just guessing I'd have to look it up but when that happens uh, then there's a crystallization, like the formation, the uh, structure of Saturn. And Saturn does uh, rule the government. There can be a much more compassionate, much more, um, you know, there's a lot of people that were born during Saturn conjunct Neptune, and they're very creative, they're very grounded, but they're also very open to their spirits. Um, a lot of them are born just a couple of years. I mean, I, I have Saturn conjunct Neptune, but in there are two different signs. My, and, but they're about like eight degrees apart, and I was born 54. But my friends, I do have some friends that were born a year or two ahead of me, and they have it like, um, so like 1952, 53 is what I'm saying. They were born with it conjunct exactly. Uh, and... Depending on what sign it is, uh, you know that that flavors uh, the manifestation. But with this next one coming up, it'll be in Pisces. So we're talking music, art, everything I'm going to talk about today: spiritualism, mysticism. I, uh, you know, connecting with your spirit to bring yourself home to who you truly are is what this is really about. And so we're in this opportunity, this window of time, uh, where we can really make headway. You know, we can heal the past. That's what this art aspect of the architect is here. Heal the past and move forward into a much brighter future. Um, now, if we're not working in the light, Neptune has a tendency to dissolve whatever is not aligned with the light. It has a tendency to um, just it, it can't it can't withstand the test of time, and you know that's why we have these Saturn transits to bring things in. Um, so you know, basically, like whatever hasn't been built on. Uh, love on like the foundation of love and truth and it has to dissolve uh, and of course the world is still going through you know Pluto and Capricorn and notice how there's that trying to the north node and Pluto and Capricorn has everything to do with integrity and being in our authority and then moving towards a, a happier peaceful more peaceful abundant life you know coming from that but if we're not, and we want to go in a different direction, then um, especially with Saturn and Aquarius, now Mars has moved, you know, crossed over, and it's moving towards Pisces, and Mars and Venus, they and same with Mercury, they all move so quickly. I'm not going to touch into those transits today. 
I, again, in my weekly videos, I do everything in depth there, and you get like just about an hour. <laughs> I, I still have, still don't find time to timestamp those, so you can just move forward to the days more quickly. Or if anybody wants to do that for me, I will just love you forever. <laughs> um, but so, but anyway, with with Saturn squaring the nodes, and I remember looking this up last week. I think it's I think it's through September we're going to have this transit here. And whenever a planet squares the nodes, you go to the planet, you talk about, you think about the planet. Okay, so Saturn is the, like I said, the way we have uh, structure and form in our lives. And in Aquarius, it's societal structure. And when it's squared to the north and south nodes, you go to the planet and then you go to the left of the planet and that's the resolution node in order to move forward. So here, here we are in this place where we're needing to learn to, or well, needing to actually like let go of, I mean, this is what I'm feeling. I, let me know if I'm not if you don't feel the same way, but I feel that uh, it's a test to get off of oil. You know, Neptune rules oil and natural gas. Also rules film and, um, you know, movies, all of that stuff. Glamour, <laughs> beauty, all, all of those things. It's the higher octave of um, Venus. And Venus is in Pisces too. At some point, this you know Venus will move forward in here. This that'll be interesting to look at. I'll have to to check that out at some point. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't think it'll be that long. So Neptune's going to be sitting there though uh, for quite some time. And this aspect of the architect here, this. Uh, gateway into creating something much more beautiful, much more uh, full of integrity to help you on your path. This is lasting for quite some time, but I really feel like society is needing to go through this change to get off of dependency on foreign oil because it's not sustainable, or to get off of dependency on oil, period, because Especially, I mean, my goodness, for a means for transportation. They, they, I've seen, uh, you know, inventions where there are solar panels on the wings of jets to get them moving around. I mean, if we can do it with a, with a plane, why can't we do it with a, um, or we can do it with a plane, why can't we someday do it with a big old jet, right? <laughs> But so, but meanwhile, you know, some countries are completely dependent on um, foreign oil. And so they're beholden to this, you know, like dictator monster uh, that comes, you know, all that comes with strings attached. But with this planetary lineup here, these, these aspects look like they're easy and soft, but, and, they, and they can be, they really can be. This one is a major test. This Saturn square the nodes, major test. And it's, like I said, going through. It's been going on for quite some time. It's been going through for um, months, and it won't be over until September. Uh, but then we've got Uranus. So at some point, Mars is going to catch up to Uranus. They're both going to catch up to the north node. This is This will be like late July early August and I'll do it I'll do a separate video on that so but I, I'm like I'm seeing this like Mars moves energy caught up with Uranus it could be something dangerous and I, I hope not because Uranus conjunct the south node I mean north node can bring humanity to a place where we are having to make a change, whether we want to or not, and we are all waking up. So, but I think that, I think this is like a choice point here, and the reason, you know, we had, because we had, remember we had Mars and Venus back up here in Capricorn before, and now it's crossed over, it's on the other side of Saturn at this point. So, with, um, 
by the time Mars gets catches up here to um, to Uranus, I think that a lot of people, much so many more people, the, the greater numbers of people will have gone through experiences to where they they Mars get in touch with what they really want, and then there's big changes. And I think that people are going to be really tired by then, uh, by this, you know, late summer. Uh, they're going to be really tired of the high gas prices, and they're going to be probably doing everything they can to maybe sell their cars and go for, you know, uh, electric cars. Um, you know, there's that Ford F-150 truck that I remember seeing on Rachel Maddow months ago. Uh, all electric, right? And Ford's had that little, um, I don't think it was a Bronco. I don't know what the heck it was. The little, the tr the well, like it was gas and electric, but, you know, fully electric would be nice, all right? But nobody's going to want to keep paying these gas prices because it's ridiculous. And, and it's all just, you know, because of what OPEC, you know, sets the fees to be. I mean... It's just crazy. So anyway, for now, it's like we're we're witnessing, and I'll get to the USA chart in, in just a moment, but I wanted you to see the simplicity of these transits here because when I bring in the, the other chart that I have right over here, it's um, it's two wheels and it uh, looks more complex. But I'll, I'll do my best to keep it really simple. And uh, and to not take you know too long, so so on a soul spiritual level, these transits, this planetary lineup, it's all about witnessing the vicious circles of negativity in the evils of materialism, greed, apathy, numbness, and cruelty, all built you know, for conglomerations like OPEC to make more money. And people like the little guy over in Russia who's just has everything set up just, just for money. It's because these people only believe in materialism in the material realm. They do not believe in past lifetimes or future lifetimes. Their uh, reasoning abilities are so shut down that they're... They, they can't see the forest for the trees. They need to open up. That's what this, you know, all this in Aquarius is about. And that's what Uranus and Taurus is. It's all about opening up to the expanse. And Jupiter and Neptune here, my goodness, this expanse of, yeah, we know what the past was like. Do we want more of that or are we done with it? Do we want to move forward into a way that supports the earth? Right? I mean, in this stellium in Pisces here, or now when Venus gets here, there will be a stellium. We did have the sun here, and we had that stellium. Venus is moving close. We're going to have that stellium again. And, it, and then, you know, it's just more of the same thing where with the south node in Scorpio here too, it can, it can be possibly healing our addiction to foreign oil. It can be healing uh, people, that, anyone that wants to heal their uh, addictions if you're going through anything like that, you know, addiction to anything. It can be sugar. It can be too much TV. It can be um, being sedentary. It can be, you know, salt. It can be, you know, anything that's taking a toll on your health. Uh, you know, anything that's creating a vicious circle in your life. Uh, any type of negativity right? We can heal that. We have, that's what this aspect is here for, to open us up to heal that. And it can also be, on another level, I, I see this as being, you know, with the ravages of war in Ukraine, I see this as being, you know, like a, a, a beautiful checkout point for some souls who are not able to you know, come forward with us on earth. No judgment there at all. It just means that they're going home. But, um, you know, it can be that gateway to their spiritual home. And it can that can happen too in the case of like a fatal overdose, right? 
doesn't matter what it what it is. Could be any anything. Hold on, excuse me. <coughs> uh, so let's see. So then, meanwhile, here I'm gonna make sure I look at all these. Uranus and Taurus here is holding space for us to come up with new inventions for healing. I think the physical body with COVID. And um, hold on, I need water again. My goodness. That's kind of funny. I start talking about COVID and get, get a scratchy throat. <laughs> I know I don't have it. But anyway, so Taurus is about safety, right? It's about bliss and safety and happiness and connection in our bodies. Uranus can bring in upsets, but it can also bring in in new inventions. So we can have new inventions for healing the physical body. Just think of, you know, even though the vaccine doesn't completely make us, uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't it keeps us out of the hospital, but we can still get it. But new drugs coming in to, uh, you know, if you catch it, then you can we, can, we can go get a pill, you know, and keep it from turning into those, what is it called, like a, um, cyclotine, or oh, I can't remember how to pronounce it, but a storm <laughs> in our bodies that causes, uh, you know, the, the need to be in the ICU. New drugs there. And then um, also this lineup has everything to do with finding ways to create more safety on Earth. Uh, Pluto and Capricorn in aspect to the North Node in Taurus here, which is going to last for quite some time. Uh, we're, we're in that place of, you know, there's that gateway to integrity here with this aspect of the architect and then the trine here to the North Node. I... And I feel it's more about like living in integrity, living in sustainability, like in ways that are sustainable, because we're talking Capricorn and Taurus. <laughs> and the rules of society that are going to change so that we can live in sustainability. That's the main thing I see going on here, besides all the soul healing that we can do. Uh, you know, it's like the microcosm and the macrocosm. It, we're all connected. So living in sustainable ways uh, would be the, you know, the, the whole solution uh, with the oil consumption, right? And the, the ozone layer and the um, rainforest. Oh, my goodness. Every time I... You know, I, I see something in, in the, the rainforest in the Amazon. I'm just like, oh my goodness, it's almost gone. And the polar ice caps, right? All of that, every, you know, things are melting. Um, sea level rise, it's, it's not, it's just not good. So, so we need to move towards, you know, sustainable practices to, uh, to create. We need new electrical grids. Um, that would be Uranus and Taurus. It reminds me of a dream I had about flying cars a while back, but I, I should probably not take too much more time with this. <laughs> anyway, but we're going to need more, you know, those rare earth elements, rare earth minerals to create the electrical grids. Not to mention all that's used, you know, for our, our cell phones and um, TVs, computers, smartphones, you know, smart TVs, all that. And then there's the military defense systems like, you know, with laser lasers and um, sonar and radar and all of that. I, you can search online for countries with most like rare earth elements and see which ones are supplying us currently. But... All of that, and I think the USA, I think we do quite a bit, and China does quite a bit. I think we were the two main countries, but we're, I don't think we're the main countries that have the rare earth elements, you know, those are going to, that's going to take um, peace with other countries, right? 
Yeah, so all of this is speaking to, you know, Pluto, like the power in Capricorn, right? Uh, deep earth and ocean, right? And, um, yeah. So, and with Taurus, like, you know, with the Taurus to me is kind of like the bounties of the earth. Just think of, um, think of the Empress card in the tarot, if you're familiar with tarot. She's all about the bounties of the earth and uh, ruled by Venus, right? And then Saturn rules Capricorn. So we're talking, uh, you know, the being in an Aquarius for you know, quite some time now, um, you know, at that vibration, that emanation of choosing. Um, it's like the testing ground for, for a new way of living, for society to have new ways of living and more freedom. But we have to hold that polar opposite of Leo, you know, Leo love, and align our will with our love. Right, align with the love in our hearts and not go into unhealthy anger and apathy or um, disconnecting from our hearts when we don't get what we want. Right, so we might, you know, just be careful because we might see people being more rebellious. Um, you know, the the rebels rather than um. Especially if you try it, you know, it's like kids, like when you have teenagers, so you tell them what to do, they're going to do the opposite, right? <laughs> the rebellion is just, ah. Uh. So I'm speaking to some of the negative traits of Aquarius. They can be rebellion, uh, how dare you tell me kind of thing, right? Who do you think you are? I'm the one with the brains, right? It's me, <laughs> With the brains. <laughs> oh my God. Um, you know, so basically like intellectual pride. Yeah, that's going to work. Sure. Um, when you, Whenever we put ourselves above somebody else, you're, you're in a battle, right? I mean, it's just not, it's never going to work. Um, sometimes they can be really pessimistic too because, you know, they think they have it all figured out and they know how it's going to work or not. And then because of that, they can be really impatient sometimes, and that can also be one of the Taurus issues sometimes is to be stubborn and dig your heels in because just because you want it your way, but you need to open up and see, you know, something that's bigger that could make it so much better, especially if you slowed down and waited and did it right. If you can, doesn't mean you have to be perfect. Nobody has to be perfect. But... Um, you know, on the negative side, you can kind of be all over the place with, with Aquarian energy, all over the place, like mentally. On the positive side, we can be so much more open than ever and see that bigger picture. And, and then when you get there, that's how you, you know, you invent new things. And with Taurus, it's all, you know, bliss, safety, body safety, connection, you know, protection, protection, <laughs> protecting others, protecting children, protecting yourselves. Um, and then with Neptune and, and Jupiter here, that's been helping us, uh, you know, because they're like emanating this limitless possibilities on all levels of creation. You know, Jupiter has a tendency to heal. And especially through forgiveness, and I'm speaking more to, you know, Jupiter, Neptune, and Pisces here. Uh, Neptune can free the soul. If you if you want to align, if you choose to align with, with the fullness of your spirit. Now, the other option which most people hold on to is to go for revenge, right? Which Scorpio and Pluto rules Scorpio. Oh, goodness. Um, and again, with Pluto and Capricorn in, in aspect, you know, to the, the North Node here, um, in Taurus, it, it with that aspect of the ar architect, this whole line up here with this trine and this aspect of the architect, architect here, um, from, from this angle, what I'm seeing is 
it it reveals to me, I think, a deeper soul lesson here where we want justice. We want to stop abusers, terrorists, and uh, invaders, right? And, and that's really healthy to do that and stand up for ourselves. And, and the all the people in the people in Ukraine that are fighting for themselves and standing up for their families, they are doing the right thing. But if they're doing it because they want revenge, rather than seeing, you know, like sometimes when somebody's coming after you to kill you, you have to, you have to stand up for yourself. And um, doing that is actually really healthy. Self-defense is a healthy, because we're talking survival here with Taurus. Survival you know, to take care, to protect yourself and your family, that's that's healthy. But if they're coming from a place of, um, like, I was so touched. I watched this guy on, um, the, it was a boyfriend or the husband, I can't remember, of, a, of uh, one of the reporters that was killed. And he was vowing revenge on the Russia and you know, Russia military, the Russian, or whoever, he didn't know who killed her. It could have been friendly fire. You know, you, that's the problem with war is you just don't know. And a lot of people have died because of, you know, someone on their own side that accidentally shot them. So, but he vowed revenge. He be, and that And he had this false belief, I could tell as he was talking about it, he had this false belief that that was the only way to uh, avenge or heal the fact that he lost his girlfriend or wife. I can't remember if they were actually married. So I'm sitting there watching this thinking, okay, now the way to, the, the healthy thing would be, yeah, we want these abusers locked up, but treated humanely. Because if we want, if we want to inflict pain onto them, then we're just as bad as them. We're just, we're vibrating at that, you know, we, that's not good. <laughs> so I'm sitting there watching this guy, listening to him, and I'm thinking like, oh my God, how many lifetimes is it going to take to clear that, right? And I'm thinking it would take as many as needed, you know, to stand up for yourself, but also to see that the perpetrator is stopped and then and then forgive, right? And in, in forgiveness and this whole lineup here, can be about forgiving the past rather than revenge and moving into spiritual bliss. And with Uranus moving towards the North Node, there's going to be lots of opportunity for that. Now, forgiveness to me doesn't mean that you forget, right? It just means that you don't want to hurt the other person in order to get revenge for your pain. So that's all I have to say about that. Now, Jupiter, besides healing and the belief systems, rules law, all types of law. It doesn't matter whether it's man-made or natural earthly law or planetary cosmic spiritual law. Jupiter rules that. And then Neptune holds a space for cosmic spiritual law. <laughs> This is so cool. So I'm thinking a lot of people are going to, going to be wanting to study spiritual law. I think that com, you know Jupiter combined with Neptune here, we're going to have the best of both realms to reach each other. You know through art, through film, through video, through all forms of social media. I and I think that more and more people are veering away from uh, controlling. You know that would be Saturn. Uh, religions, and more towards all things spiritual. And then, of course, with the nodes in Taurus and then Saturn up here at the top, this is the refugee crisis with so many souls needing safety from the wrath of Putin. And Saturn, for us personally here, I'm thinking, especially in America, I'm thinking that it's our test to open our hearts and our wallets, you know, again, Taurus survival, to, um, to help them out, you know, to create change. It, that would be the healing aspect of Scorpio. 
transformation, renewal, rebirth, because we have a new, a new way of being. So okay, so that's that's all I have with the the simple chart here. Now this one here is um, the Neptune uh, Jupiter Neptune conjunction within the USA independence chart that I was talking about earlier. So I'm not going to go through everything because I, I've already done that with the Pluto return that in the three phases all the way through the, the go through the end of um, the end of the year actually is December, I think 28th, I think 22nd or 28th, something like that. So that video is already in there. So I'm just going to touch on some simple things here. So um, again, back, so back to the nodes. See how we've got the um, the 22-degree Scorpio here. The, so the outer wheel are the transits, and the inner wheel here is the um, USA Independence chart. So the south node here, north node here, and Saturn is square here, right? See, see that there? That shows up in our second house of values. Now I can talk about the houses because I've got a chart <laughs> that's based on a specific time and place. So Saturn moving through this the second house, and Pluto's there too. And remember, we're still having, we've got the Pluto. It's going to go backwards a little bit, and then it'll come forward, and then it'll be done. It won't be done until, um, oh my goodness, was it 20, 20? Yeah, it won't, Pluto won't get into air, um, Aquarius until 2023. And then when it gets close to the, the south node, I, I will do those readings. Probably be 2023. I'll, I'll, I'll start doing that early. Or maybe maybe later this year. But anyway, I digress. It's like squirrel. <laughs> so, so with Saturn squaring the nodes here, you can see... This is this is that lineup, and Saturn's been uh, in uh, the second house of the USA's um, uh, you know chart here. For does Saturn lasts in in one house, it transits through. It usually takes two to two and a half years. So it, this is this is our you know re, think of our uh, election. 2020 election and Saturn was here, right? Somewhere in here. I can't remember, you know, like, yeah, oh, it was 20. Well, my mind's gone with dates right now. But, but yeah, so 2020, <laughs> we probably had, I think we had the Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto um, uh, stellium when that happened. But anyway, suffice to say, we have had uh, Saturn for the last two and a half years, or two years at least, two and a quarter years, I would say, uh, in the second house, and we've been able to explore what really matters to us. And we voted Trump out, and we're trying to heal, and, and it's it's like clean up on aisle 45, right? Uh, and it's still going on. So, so this... Um, this, these aspects here, because the south node's in the 12th house, so it's a past, things need to heal. Uh, we need to bring people to justice without, you know, wanting to kill them, right? Like I said before. <laughs> and then the north node, because the south node's going to stay in this um, uh, 12th house for quite some time. It's um, Oh, no, no, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm totally wrong there. Uh, the nodes go backwards. So the nodes are going to go this way. So the south node is going to go more towards the 11th, so the house of humanity. And it's already right there on that. Oh, my goodness, look at that. It's already right there on that house cusp. Wow. So just has to go a little bit more, and it'll be in the 11th house of humanity. Goals, wishes, dreams, like I said before, like society, uh, coming together, the group consciousness of society. And then the, the north node is going to move into the fifth house of creation, creating, co-creating, pleasure, um, everything 
that has to do with our creative self-expression. That's nice. <laughs> okay, so so there's that. And I, we can see that Pluto, he, the natal Pluto and transiting Pluto here is squaring the sun, although the sun will move quickly, but there's still, I'm the reason I'm tuning into that is because I can tell that this is, see how the sun's at 22 and Pluto here is at 27, 20, 28. This, this is, um, you know, this is Pluto square this day. And as the sun moves forward, it's in orbit, and as the sun moves forward and starts connecting even with um, uh, Mercury here, but Mercury's going to keep going too. But anyway, you know, by one, de one degree every day, it'll be in a really tight orb. It just has to get to 28 degrees. And I think there could be some, you know, because the sun can reveal things, can shine the light on things. And so I think even more is going to come up around uh, people who abused their power in the past. And with um, Jupiter and Neptune here opposing natal Neptune, you know, natal Neptune here, and then square Mars. So Mars, Mars in, um, Mars in, in uh, Gemini wants to bring in new ideas. It gathers the facts. And this whole line up here, so this opposition here, if I were, here, hold on, I'll, I'll, let me draw it in, if I can even do a, a straight line. Let me just try and do this. I should have grabbed my ruler and brought it in, but that to this little puppy over here that brings in lies versus truth remember what i was talking about neptune lies so we're going to blow up the lies of the past because we've gathered enough facts and i am thinking and i could be wrong but i'm thinking we're probably going to be seeing some of the um the hearings, the January, I'm thinking by by then, by this time, or close to, or, you know, even before or after, somewhere in April, I'm feeling like um, we could be seeing uh, the public broadcasts of uh, the January 6th uh, hearing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice, right? Uh, yeah, and this Neptune opposition, notice how it's at 23 and our natal Neptune for USA is at 22, but it's been, this has been in orb since late 2020. I, and, yeah, there's like a, it, I think there was an exact square to Mars uh, back then, if I remember right. Okay, but anyway, that's neither here nor there for that, for this. Um, and like I was saying, Mars is going to catch up here to Uranus, and Uranus is going to catch up to the North Node, because the Node's moving backwards, and, and these two, I think they join together in, eight, in uh, like 18 degrees or something like that. Uh, and I think it's July 31st when I looked back. So... So I'll talk about that. We'll I'll do that later. But this Mars moves energy, in, excuse me, in uh, in Aquarius, it's thinking outside the box, and we want to be free of the past, and we want to make change, and that, and we're all headed in that direction. But now, meanwhile, here, you know, April twelfth, and and even now, what what is today? March. Hold on. Wednesday, March 23rd, okay. It's probably going to take me a long time to get this uploaded, so you might not get it till the 24th. But anyway, be careful with COVID because we've got an expansion here, and Neptune and Pisces is definitely what brought COVID in, right? We know that Neptune was in Pisces when COVID hit. So, uh, and then with this square to Uranus, especially be careful because I'm... Um, or I'm sorry, I didn't draw that in the right place. The square's here to Mars. Yeah. Sorry about that. So 
with the square to Mars. So there's a lot of energy moving. Mars, I'm sorry, Gemini rules the lungs. So there can be uh, mist, uh, toxins that move, and especially uh, irritation, inflammation would be Mars type of energy. And then with um, Gemini, we're talking the airways and lungs. So be careful with COVID. Be careful. Be very careful. Uh, and I don't care what the governors say in whatever states and the, all these, like, you know, releasing these restrictions and you don't have to wear your mask anymore because you're whatever, cause you're, because you're vaccinated. Well, you can still get it, and there can be a new variant that you're not vaccinated, vaccinated against. So be careful. You know, be self-responsible. Don't give your, your health responsibility over to anyone. So, but anyway, with this opposition here, that's the thing I'm worried about is truth versus lies, and I'm worried about COVID, but I do expect to see things uh, come out on, I do expect to see hearings broadcast. If they're not on TV, they'll be online, or, you know, maybe you just have to get it on C-SPAN, but I bet you they'll be on TV. I mean, if we're having the confirmation hearings for justice go on, you know, for <laughs> days. I love it though, and I absolutely love Kataji Brown Jackson. But um, we're probably going to have that with um, uh, if they'll show up, you know, people like uh, Trump and his cohorts, or maybe Roger Stone. I don't know. That's the thing: is are they going to get out of Dodge, or are they going to are they going to show up for um, a hearing? So anyway. Uh, what else do we have here? So remember what I was talking about with that Mars. Wait, hold on. Where's the chart? Not Mars. I'm saying Pluto. This here, Pluto, trying the North Node. This is it here. Pluto trines right here. See that 28 degrees to um, the transiting node there. I. That's the important piece there. And then... The, um, yeah, the sextile, right, the other end of the sextile to Neptune is here. Yeah, okay. So, uh, hold on, I'm having to translate this in my head. Yeah, that's that aspect of the architect where it's, we want to get to the truth. We want to get to the truth. We're, we're tired of all this other garbage. I... Um, it's that gateway to finally break through that, right? Because it's like the lever law in, this, in spirituality. It's a lever law where you've been working, 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 gathering information. I, you know, it's, it's like, imagine playing a game of solitaire and finally all the cards line up and then you can put everything back to where it goes. And <laughs> where, or where the, the natural order of things would be. And, Neptune in Virgo is divine order. That's how I would translate that. And then in Pisces, Neptune in Pisces would be finally a completion, a completion of divine order and a big cycle, right? And especially because of the Pluto return in the USA, I really feel like we're going to have completion at some point in here, at you know, some point in time this, this spring, where I... Yeah, it's going to get real for some people. <laughs> it's the only way I can say it. <laughs> for traitors, treasonous traitors, um, you know, that aligned with Trump. And, you know, with Saturn here in Libra, this has to do with the government traitors are seen. Maybe we'll have justice um, because of this opposition here to transiting Chiron. See that? Here, I'll draw that in for you. If I can get it in the right spot again. This right here. Oops. This is what I'm speaking to. Get my thumb out of the way. Chiron in Aries. It can be really selfish, but it can also break through because it's like we're tired of not being seen, not being... Um, you know, what's the word? Like, you don't want to be taken for granted anymore, right? 
and there's this autonomy. And so this, to me, to translate it into, um, you know, mundane astrology would be like us and who we are and how we want to exist versus the man in government. And if it's not fair, if it's not balanced, and if we don't have justice, I think we're going to be really going into, um, and, and I do think that we are going to have justice, but I think if it doesn't happen by the time Chiron is in exact opposition, see it's 12 here, if, but when Chiron comes to 14, if we're not seeing some progress, uh, we're going to be going crazy about it, I think. I think we're just, yeah, it's not going to go well for people in, in uh, <laughs> it's not going to go well for Merrick Garland or Biden or anybody that, um, well, Biden has to stay out of things, but Merrick Garland and all these other attorney generals and Letitia James, and it's like, if we don't see some justice uh, soon after this spring and throughout the whole year, we're we're going to be, you know, we're going to be speaking up, you know, even more so than we are already. Um, yeah, especially because of this this transiting square here to, um, you know, Saturn and the nodes, definitely. You know, we're we're talking about governmental um, Saturn governmental testing. Or, you know, test to our the structure of our government, and then Saturn. Notice how Saturn here is at twenty three, and the the moon of our you know our natal chart. So the moon in our um, USA chart is about our moods and our roots and our homeland. And it's because it's in Aquarius. This it like stimulates, and with Mars pushing the energy here on the moon. And Saturn's coming in right behind. Well, Mars has already crossed over, so that's it, already pushed the Saturnian energy. And now we're in this, you know, we have this whole mood going on here that, um, and with the, with the moon in, even though I wasn't going to talk about these, you know, the moon here, but it's at 29 degrees. So, so even the days leading up to April 12th, where it's coming into orb, and it's serious, and we're we're, you know, we're tired of things not being done, uh, and then we're weary because we're holding space for you know we're holding our hearts open for uh, sending all types of love and support you know to Ukraine. So we're we're tired, we're weary, we're restless, and and with. Uh, you know, Saturn getting ready to cross over this conjunct the moon, that's going to stay there for quite some time when that transit happens. I'll definitely speak to that when, um, when we get to, um, when I get to, the, I'll, I'll do that July, late July. Um, that'll probably still be an orb. Wait, let me see. Do I have, oh yeah, hold on. I have that chart here. Where is... So Saturn's at 23. Yeah, because Saturn's going to end up going retrograde. Check that out. I have to figure out when that happens. Yeah, so this is July 31st. And and we can see Mars. This, this is that whole lineup that I was talking about before. Um, yeah. So Saturn at 22. Oh, so it's going to be quite some time. I'm going to have to figure out when. That, that'll be way later on because we're going to have a retrogradation process in here. So that means Saturn is going to stay in that second house for quite some time. I'll have to check that out and figure out when, when Saturn actually moves into our third house here. Because Saturn in the third can bring in... Uh, can bring in some... New ideas. Well, that's kind of Mars's job right now. Mars and Venus and Jupiter. That's what's going on there. New ideas for healing and wholeness. And and then Saturn is still. It's going to stay in the second until we, you know, bring in that manifestation of mastering what society really wants, what society really values, and. 
and so we're looking we're looking ahead for some serious times. That's all I can say there for now. Yeah, but so keep our hearts and minds open. This is going to test our ability to keep our hearts and minds open. Uh, but, you know, because we want freedom, but we have to be careful with COVID. We want to be free of the, this, these ridiculous GOP, you know, these greedy old pervs, as some of my friends call them. <laughs> it's not the grand old party anymore, is it? So, you know, there can be rebellion against the man about that which very well should be, but, you know, we have to do it in a healthy way. You know, we just have to get them out, vote them out, keep them out, fight for free and fair votes without suppression, without repression, um, moving towards peaceful relationships. Um, some people aren't going to want to see the truth. This would be aligning with the, because so South Node in, in uh, just to reiterate a little bit, touch in on this here, South Node in Aquarius opposing the North Node in Leo, we're coming, all of us Americans are coming from the place of wanting to be free and liberated and live our lives the way we want to live them. And we know that we have it within us to figure that out. We don't need any government person to tell us, unless, you know, there are some people that just float through life and they don't want to be responsible for what they create, those people are going to have more trouble. And we're headed towards open-hearted giving and loving and generosity, because that's the polarity of, you know, our chart. That's just the way it is. That's what we declared on July 4th, 1776, whether we were there or not, we were there in spirit. <laughs> In another lifetime, we might have been there. I don't know. Um, but we were there in spirit, and we're, and it's living on, and this polarity will always be uh, in place for us. We're freedom and love, right? That's what it's all about. <laughs> uh, and then uh, some people are not going to want to see the abuses of power or deal with the abuses of power, and that's, you know, that can that can be trouble. Um, and we're going to continue on gathering those facts about what happened on January 6th. And then at some point, the truth is going to break through. That might, it might take until this summer when Mars catches up with um, uh, Aquarius, I'm sorry, uh, Uranus here. And then they both catch up with the North Node. There's that possibility. But it could happen before then, too. But I, I'm thinking if it doesn't happen by July 31st or August 1st in here, there's going to be major trouble, I'm thinking. But it could be that things go on trial and we're, we're seeing hearings go on uh, in April, it's possible, and maybe it maybe it drags out a few months or maybe it's fully done in a month or so in May and then... And then it takes, it could be that it takes until July 31st to, um, to get to uh, a final, final point. Because Uranus breaks through, it opens things up, and that's where we're headed. <laughs> so I think that's it. Let me look here real quick. So just remember, the main thing is our autonomy, going, moving towards peace, the spiritual opportunities to heal the past, I uh, and and yeah, everything else I've already I've already said. That's it. Okay, <laughs> thanks you guys. I'm gonna get this uploaded, and um, I'll be back in a while uh, for. I might look at when Jupiter moves into Aries. And let me go with this chart. It'll be easier for you to see. Jupiter will move into Aries in May. can't remember the date. I think it was early May, early or mid-May. And, and, and then by the time Jupiter at some point will catch up with um, Chiron, and that, that will be very healing for people too. Um, but yeah, so that's it for now. <laughs> Take care, you guys. Bye.